Hi there, this is David and welcome to the first video of what I hope will become a long-running series where I kind of give a retrospective of games of my childhood. Here, we're going to be looking at the Gargoyles Quest Trilogy, released for the Game Boy, NES, and SNES. Back in the day when I was a kid, I would play whatever games I could get my hands on. It wasn't always RPGs, though I did prefer them. My brother and I inherited a metric ton of NES games from my uncle when he went away to college, because my grandmother sent us all 70 of his games from all sorts of different genres, so I have pretty extensive experience with the 8-bit juggernaut, and one of those games that was sent to us back in 1989 was Ghosts and Goblins. I'm gonna be honest here though, I hated it. It was way too hard. It was one of those games like Hudson's Adventure Island where if you got hit once, you die. And I'm not exactly a fan of that. But I wasn't all that discerning as a seven-year-old kid, so I played it pretty often. And imagine my excitement when I saw an ad in Nintendo Power of a game that starred the antagonist of Ghosts and Goblins, and it was a role-playing game with a world map. I'm a pretty simple guy, and these two pages right here completely sold me on the game. All I had to see were the words role-playing, a menu system where you choose commands like in Dragon Warrior, and a couple of towns. That's all I really need. So that Christmas, I got Gargoyle's Quest for the Game Boy, and it was a Metroidvania well before that was even a thing. The action takes place in a side-scrolling format where you collect vials, the currency of the game, as well as hearts for extra life, then you fight a boss at the end. The story is pretty basic, as you complete each stage you'll save a king who will grant you some extra power such as jumping higher or floating longer. Treasures are also strewn throughout the overworld, and unfortunately random encounters are out there too. But I still love the game, and I was thrilled when a sequel was announced for the NES a few years later. So let's fast forward to Christmas of 1992. That's when I got Gargoyle's Quest, but also, let me set the stage here because by this time, the SNES was already released, and I had played some great games like Final Fantasy IV, and my NES, which my parents had bought way back in 1987, wasn't exactly in pristine working condition. But I didn't care. I would blow on the game and use the game genie to get the cartridge to work come hell or high water because I had to play this game. It was everything that the Game Boy game was and more, with many more towns, stages, power-ups, and a huge world map full of secrets. Unfortunately though, the insane difficulty rate is still there, but random encounters are a thing of the past. The levels are much larger with many more hidden items in convoluted passages, and even though this was one of the very last NES games I ever bought, I really did enjoy it. So come two years later, it's 1994, I'm in seventh grade, and the NES is pretty much a thing of the past now. But then, I hear rumblings of another Gargoyles Quest game in Nintendo Power. This time though, under a new moniker, Demon's Crest. I knew that I had to have it, it just looked so frickin' cool. Upon playing it, I found tons of differences from the first two games, but all the changes were definitely for the better. The traditional world map was scrapped, and instead of wandering around, Firebrand now flies all over the place searching for his destination and it's completely non-linear, though good luck going through the later stages before you're intended to. Vials are now much more useful as well, because before you could pretty much only buy extra lives, but now they can be used to purchase items for healing, reviving, shielding, and escaping, as well as damaging spells. The hovering meter is gone too. You can now fly over an entire stage if you want to, and because power-ups give you all sorts of new abilities, it is to your benefit to thoroughly explore stages and come back later on to break barriers, burst open doors, and swim into the depths. Castlevania fans would be right at home here. Also introduced is the Crest System, where Firebrand can morph into a different elemental themed gargoyle, such as Earth, Water, and Wind, which grants you different abilities as well, such as swimming, flying faster, or just dealing tons of damage. The system is so fun and varied and allows for so many ways to play the game that you can have endless hours of fun. Even though all of them are on the rather short side, each probably taking well under 10 hours. Also, 
Do note that just like Ghosts and Goblins, the Gargoyles quest games are pretty dang hard too. I mean, it's not die in one hit hard, but it's still hard nonetheless. I love these three games. They're so unabashedly unique that it's a wonder that there hasn't been any more of them. When the Wii came out and Nintendo was reviving old games left and right like A Boy and His Blob, Donkey Kong Country, and Blaster Master, I thought for sure that Gargoyles Quest would get revived right alongside them too, but that wasn't the case. I guess these three gems are just meant to be left in the past, though they all do still hold up to this day. This has been David. If you like what I do here on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. The link to it can be found in the video description. Also, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.